Hello and welcome back to Billy Ho Sports. Today's podcast is dedicated to all things Breeders' Cup. Exciting news for you. Breeders' Cup Classic Contender Series is now live on my YouTube channel. In this series, we are diving into each horse's profile for the Breeders' Cup Classic. And uh, I've actually put together a top 10 video you won't want to miss. So check it out. But that's not all. Uh, drop Just drop my top five picks for the $4 million turf and the $2 million turf mile. So two more videos for you to consume and start to get your research together for the Big Breeders' Cup weekend. And uh, we got a lot to cover today as we shine the spotlight on the BC Distaff. Now, if you're new to Billy Ho Sports, make sure you swing by the channel, check it out. While I am passionate about thoroughbred horse racing, I also create fantastic content for the Daily Fantasy Sports World, DFS enthusiasts covering uh dual sports pga golf and nfl fantasy football so after all if you enjoy betting on horses you probably enjoy gambling on other sports as well so there's nothing wrong with some free content check it out okay let's get the show on the road uh don't forget to hit that subscribe button uh give us a th give us the thumbs up Drop your comments. Let me know if you're on board with what we're doing or you have some differing opinions. Give us some horses you like in the distaff for fillies and mares wide open. Let's have a blast. Okay, let's kick things off with our front runner, and that is going to be Idiomatic. This horse, trained by Brad Cox, has been an absolute force during her four-year-old campaign. She boasts an impressive record, seven wins out of eight races this season. Only blemish on her record, second place finish in the grade two ruffian stakes at Belmont Park. So pretty dominant. Uh, and that dominance was on full display at Keeneland in the Spinster most recently, where she effortless, effortlessly outclassed Nest. Uh, as you can see here in the video, she rounds the turn, uh, final turn and headed for home and uh, seemed to have complete control, allowing the jockey to ease up a little bit. Yet she remained the front runner by a very significant margin. So uh, in, the subsequent, in the subsequent race, personal ensign, she delivered a similar performance, even in less than ideal sloppy conditions. So very, very strong horses in these two races. Idiomatic managed to take the lead and set reasonable fractions, leaving a little room for hope for those trying to catch up with her. So if she pulls that off here, then uh, it's really, really going to be a, a tough call for these closers that we'll talk about here a little bit later to uh, get it done. So she can adjust her speed if needed. Uh, like in the Shawnee Stakes, she was pushed a little bit more up front and uh, handled the race just the same, increasingly clear that she is in a league of her own. All right, well, it, that was going to lead me into Nest, uh, but the first news bomb of the week, I guess, comes out, and it looks like Nest is out of the Breeders' Cup disc staff. Uh, she is owned by a partnership that includes the Repulse Stables, Eclipse, Thoroughbred Partners, and others. Uh, they're actually going to offer her up at auction. I don't know if she's going to be retired yet, but the Fasting Tipton November uh, auction, known as the Night of the Stars sale. Uh, so she'll be there. And for what it's worth, Secret Oath will also be there. And she has actually been retired. We'll be at that sale as well. So I was going to have this trio of Curlin half-sisters, but Nest is out. So we just got the duo. And we'll complete that duo with Clary Air under the guidance of trainer Steve Asmussen. Clarier secured a solid second place finish in the Shuvi, and more recently she landed in fifth place in that personal ensign we just discussed. It is worth noting that she hasn't quite matched the very impressive form she displayed earlier this spring or past spring when she clinched victories in the Apple Blossom and the Ogden Phipps, which we're kind of looking at as we scroll through here. However, uh, if she can re rediscover that winning form, obviously she would be uh, 
good chance to close out. She's one of the closers. So if there is a faster pace, she can get after uh, horses like Idiomatic and the lot. So uh, that will shift our attention over to search results. Talented horse, trainer Chad Brown, certainly does pique my interest. This five-year-old mare took the lead in the Ogden Phipps Stakes as they turned for home, put together a very strong performance. While she was narrowly edged out at the finish by Clarier, who we just discussed, her front-running style has proved effective in uh, races covering a mile and a sixteenth. The extra distance might be a challenge, not sure. Uh, however, uh, her most recent wire-to-wire -wire victory at Churchill Downs in this grade three Locust Grove is a promising step in the right direction. And while it might be a tall order for search results to keep pace with the leaders, if the pace unfolds reasonably to hot, she certainly stands a chance to be there down the stretch and maybe get a nice check. I would say the if the pace is set kind of slower, if she's alongside of uh, Idiomatic, it's going to be really tough to go heads up against them. But it was only a matter of time. Now we are on to the man, the myth, the legend, Bob Baffert, uh, Santa Anita. I mean, it's all about the, the white-haired wonder. Baffert's four-year-old filly, Adair Manor, strong, strong contender, probably 1A to Idiomatic, 1B maybe, uh, is entering the distaff in superb shape of her own. Uh, not too long ago, she effortlessly outpaced a small field at Santa Anita by a very significant margin. And just before that, she patiently stayed in the second position, biding her time until the opportune moment to make her move. While it did require some harder work down the stretch over the Del Mar surface, as you can see, she ultimately emerged victorious. But what is uh, noteworthy is she looked to me much faster on the Santa Anita dirt than she did at Del Mar. And that may bode true for many a horse, but uh, I think that, that she is going to absolutely love the surface and is going to be tough, tough, tall order to beat. Okay. This season, she's uh, boasting a remarkable record, five wins out of six races. And the only exception being the second place finish in her first race back following the five month break in the seasons. Uh, also worth highlighting that she's either won or secured uh, top placement, hit the board in every race she's run at Santa Anita. So uh, that leads us into Chad's Browns. Remarkable three-year-old talent, randomized, arriving with an impressive three-race win streak of her own. Her most recent victory came in the Belle Dame Stakes at the Big A at Belmont. She certainly lived up to her status as the heavy favorite. However, she faced off against some stiff competition uh, from Brad Cox's four-year-old Amo Ray, who I hope we'll see in this race as well. Uh, you can see down the stretch, Amo Ray had the inside lane and really, really uh, pushed, uh, randomized to the brink. So, uh, and, and uh, Amo Ray is uh, another horse that, I, that I'm uh, pretty high on. Uh, th 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 these horses are kind of like the horses I would see filling out exotics, especially Amo Ray. I don't think she's a win contender, but you never know. Uh, it is also worth noting in these small field races, and I'm sure it's obvious to most and all, uh, that it's, uh, in my opinion, it's not as difficult because you got two things to, that you're less worried about. A, the competition, when you only got two to three horses to beat, and maybe the other ones are just long shots anyway. And B, there's very little risk of trip trouble. Now, we're going to have probably 14 horses in this field, and uh, those dynamics will certainly come to play in a crowded field like that. So, like I said, MRA gave randomized the spirited battle down to the wire, and uh, so hopefully we will uh, see more of that to come. Let's finish the show out uh, with a trio of three-year-olds that will have an impact on the distaff since we just started off with a little three-year-old action. Uh, the story of wet paint, cute story, begins in the wake of another glorious day for Godolphin uh, Stables at Saratoga. Uh, following the victory, uh, essential quality that won this uh, Travers a couple years ago at the spa uh, was following the cherished tradition, which is painting the canoe 
uh, out in the pond with the winning colors of the owners. So uh, as they do that, people always like to come out and take pictures and do all that kind of uh, things, especially the members of the Godolphin team. And one of those team members went out there and did not realize that uh, the paint was still wet. So she put her hand on there to take the picture, comes off and she's got her hand blue with blue paint. So they all had a big chuckle about that and said, hey, we're going to come up, come up with a snappy name for a horse. And guess what? That horse became wet paint and is now three years old and a filly and uh, started her own Saratoga tail when she rallied to pull off a gutty win in this uh, American Oaks grade one that we're looking at. Uh, now, wet paint was the beaten favorite in the May 5th Kentucky Oaks at Churchill Downs. She did get her first grade win. Uh, and Brad Cox had early concerns in that race. I believe it was announced that Hoosier Philly, which is hopefully going to be in this race as well, we'll speak about in a second, uh, was expected to push the pace, was scratched. So Hoosier Philly in this race will just add to more pace for this closer. So we can expect the Philly, uh, Hoosier Philly, uh, trained by Tom Amos in the upcoming race. Wet Paint uh, might be my favorite three-year-old. It's really close between her and uh, Mischievous. So we will uh, get to her in a second. But Hoosier Philly initially grabbed my attention when uh, the Monomoy girl at Ellis Park, running hard in that race, jumped out right from the start, burst out of the gates, claimed the lead, and ultimately secured a well-deserved victory. So it takes a two-month break. And uh, she came back with a disappointing eighth place finish at Kentucky Downs. But then in her last race, the grade one cotillion, she fared better, but came up empty down the stretch. We'll watch the race. Uh, after running up close uh, to a pretty honest pace, 47 and change through the opening half mile. And it was a day where rain fell. I believe we had the tropical storm coming through that weekend. The track was sloppy, but it was still pretty fast. You could still get out and it was still parks racing. So it was still front runners. So uh, even though the rain fell heavily, the track was. It may have been the fact that uh, after she makes her move coming into the final turn, she just kind of flattens out down the stretch. So, you know, it, it may have been that she just didn't uh, care or got in a bad path one way or the other. Uh, she didn't get there. So anyway, we're going to finish up the show with the 2023 Kentucky Oaks winner, pretty mischievous. And uh, she is not among the favorites. And that's maybe just because she's a three-year-old and uh, there's just a couple strong older horses in this race. Uh, I don't know. She hasn't done anything wrong. Uh, she's only won or come second in every race this season. And, oh, uh, strung together three of the biggest races of the year for a horse in her group with uh, not only claiming the Kentucky Oaks, but then the grade one acorn and test following those two. And then the second place finish in the slop in the cotillion. So uh, the win may go to a four or five year old, but this one has already clinched three-year-old filly of the year in my book. So I will look forward to seeing them run uh, here in just a few weeks. So and that's all for the show today. Hope you enjoyed it. Appreciate you smashing the like, telling your friends about Billy Ho Sports. Till the next time, see you soon.